uploading. They destroyed our cities. Scattered my people throughout the galaxy. They're called the Borg. Protect yourself, Captain, or they'll destroy you. So yeah, this is going to have major Star Trek Picard season finale spoilers. So if you don't want the culmination of the series completely ruined, then I'd suggest not watching for now. Sorry about that. Here's your warning, so I turn it off. Three, two, one. Let's just get into it. We wish for peace. In the finale, the new Borg Queen of a near-annihilated Borg Collective requests that the Slaver Nation become a provisional member of the United Federation of Planets. We aren't told explicitly if they will be able to join, but the tone of the episode, the final episode, makes everyone believe that Picard's approval means that they can. So... I guess the question is, should the United Federation of Planets allow the Borg Collective to join? If the answer is no, does the fact that we have a existential threat that could destroy everything change the stance on it, especially if the Borg can help? When we look at it, effectively the Borg are really akin to space Nazis that have mind control in a lot of ways, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's back up. We wish for peace. <laughs> This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the U.S. We have analyzed your defensive capabilities as being unable to withstand us. If you defend yourselves, you will be punished. Before we proceed, it is important to understand who and what the Borg are. The Borg Collective, also known as the Borg Hive or the Great Borg Empire, is a forced shared intelligence compromising all members linked through a hive mind via subspace transceivers. The Collective made decisions as a single entity, unless you're the Borg Queen, and was known to be efficient and deadly. Their stated goal was to bring order to the galaxy and ultimately stop suffering and pain via assimilation of all species into their fold. They would force every species, well, every species deemed worthy enough, to become a part of the Hive. The initial connection would be an offer, but if there was resistance, the civilization would be forced to be a part of that organization. Being a Borg was a rather horrific experience. Do you know what it feels like to put my hands on my friend's throat and not be able to do a goddamn thing about it? A bit like hanging limbless, powerless. A person who was assimilated would have their thoughts forced into the collective, and the sum of all their knowledge was consumed and used against those they cared for and loved. They would be required to do whatever the Empire wanted them to do, but they were also aware of it. While a bit confusing, it's kind of like being forced to do things that you don't want to, yet somehow still wanting to do them, but also being a passenger and watching as these things happen, with no way to stop it. Needless to say, you were always aware. This is Captain Picard representing the United Federation of Planets. On the opposite side, you had the United Federation of Planets, which is a supranatural interstellar union of multiple planetary nation-states that operated semi-autonomously under a single central government. It was founded on the principles of liberty, equality, peace, justice, and progress. Whatever the hell progress is, I don't know, that's never defined. And it pushed for the furthering of the universal rights of all sentient life. On paper, these two don't appear to be compatible. One is a forced slave state, and the other touts individual freedoms. However, when we analyze the history of the Federation, and Starfleet's Prime Directive specifically, sometimes they don't appear to have a lot of issues. It gets a little more murky. The Federation, from the 23rd century well into the 25th century, has generally been very hands-off in affairs that do not involve them. They stayed in the background with the Klingons, Romulans, Dominion, and more. If there was ever any attempt to change evil governments, it was indirect, through mainly cultural exchange. This would result in strife within that government and create issues for them to change. There was also possibly political pressure placed on said governments, but that's more me theorizing on this channel than what we see on screen. Just so that I'm very clear here, it is my position that the Federation accepts and tolerates injustices as long as it doesn't happen directly within their border. They will even ally with the likes of the Klingons during a time while the Klingons are possibly still engaging in subjugation of other civilizations. Now that said, this actually works out because ultimately they are able to change the culture that they've allied with, as I've stated before. It's just a very slow process. So, taking that into account, the Borg 
are generally unstoppable and not willing to negotiate. However, we do know that sometimes they will negotiate if there is a power disparity. So if the Borg don't have to negotiate, they won't. If they have a power that is on par with them or their abilities, then they will. We hear of this in Star Trek The Next Generation, we see it in Star Trek Voyager, and now it happens in Star Trek Picard. Also, there does appear to be precedent where the Federation would accept a temporary alliance, even with those as egregious as the Borg. But would they allow them to become a member world? That one's a bit trickier. It's been an interesting visit. When you're ready for membership, the Federation will be pleased to reconsider your application. Again, when it comes to internal politics, the Federation is much pickier, or at least they used to be. In the next generation's The Hunted, we know that membership required the planets that were applying to be cohesive and have no skeletons. However, in Star Trek Insurrection, we are given clues that the Federation had started fast-tracking civilizations. Any civilizations. There's very little evidence that this process slowed down after the Dominion War. But even if we accept they are allowing planets that have less than stellar histories, the Collective has been one of the most notorious enemies of the Federation, assimilating Federation citizens and Starfleet officers, killing Starfleet officers, and worse. From an evil scale, the Borg Collective probably beats the Dominion in many ways, and letting go of those grudges, even for an evolved human, would be difficult. But to toss it back just once more, the Borg are the most powerful entity that the United Federation of Planets has ever encountered. Well generally. They're the most consistent powerful enemy that doesn't involve the Q. Even if we take into account that the Romulans have a Borg cube and have been studying it, having the Collective as an ally and the possibility of gaining access to their technology would be a game changer. The Collective offers something that morals can't buy. Security. And ultimately, we know that Starfleet will give up its morals to ensure its existence. At the top, I question if the Federation and Starfleet should allow the Borg to join as a member. And honestly, I do think so. If the Borg's culture slowly begins to assimilate to that of the United Federation of Planets, then maybe they could begin to become the cooperative. I'm not completely sure though, and I'm up for the conversation. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.